This video is for my dad. Uh, this is how you do a motor swap in one of these trucks. It's pretty simple. It does take some doing, but it's nothing hard. First thing I do is take this uh, drive shaft out, but you don't necessarily have to. It just makes it easier. I've, I can do it without them, but um, why not? Also, I like having a terry cloth towel down because when parts drop, it's much easier to get them back. So I'm going to rotate the drive shafts until I find the screw holes because the whole transmission is going to come out. So I undo those first. Also, it's much easier to go ahead and pull the battery tray out. It's only four screws. So I'll do that real quick here so you can see that. They're all the same length screw, so don't worry about whether they go in and out the same location. It doesn't matter at all. The only place that you have different length screws are in the suspension. The chassis itself, just for anything that attaches to it other than suspension parts, are the identical. Um, even some of the suspension ones, like the rear shock mounts, use the same size screw. So don't worry too much about the... Uh, location of them yet. They're pretty obvious if they're different. And the reason I'm taking the battery tray out is to just get these were already out apparently I didn't put them in. I built this, uh, rebuilt it from nothing. Alright, now in order to get the motor out, just unplug that from the ESC. There's three more screws to take out. There's two here and one here. So I'll take the top one out first. And I'm just going to go ahead and do a barrage swap on this while I'm at it. Uh, I don't have any more stock motors other than this one. And uh, it's getting sent to Arizona for my dad. Love you, Dad. But this is how you do it. That's that one I sent you the picture of. Now we'll take the two out of the bottom. As you can tell, it's a pretty quick process. Do not lose the wrench that comes with your truck. It's very important. It's an oddball size. I think it's like 1.27 millimeter end on it. So it's kind of an important thing that you don't lose it. All right. Now, since we've already undone the ends of the transmission, it comes out and I can just pull these off since I've previously unscrewed them. Okay, the next thing you gotta do is get this cover off because you've gotta get the motor out. So, there's only uh, two screws that hold the cover on. They're on the motor side. And unscrew these. Again, same size screw as before, which is convenient. Don't lose any of them because the kit you buy, the Ray to Run kit, doesn't come with extra screws. So make sure you don't lose them. All right. So now the cover comes off the motor. And note the gear mesh here while we're at it. This should not be super tight that it can't turn. I'm going to zoom in just so you can see that a little better. See how that can still move in the gears? If that's too tight, it'll sound wrong, it'll overheat your motor, and the motor just will not last. You don't want that. All right, next thing you have to do to get this motor out is take this off. You can use the same wrench that you use to remove the um, lug nuts from your tires get the wheel off. Now this does have two sides to it. It's got a short side and a steeper side. Before you take it off, in order to get it back on properly, it's not a bad idea. Just put a dot on it. And that way, before you even remove the screw, if you have a dot on it, you know that it can only go back on 
the way that the dot is out because you physically can't get a pen back in there. So we know that's the front side of the gear. That's important for later. All right, now you're ready to take the motor off. And this one is different. It has a, I believe a 1.5 millimeter wrench. Let me find that real quick. This says 1 on it and it works really good. You may or may not have a kit like that, but uh, you'll take out this screw and this screw. And they're the only ones in this whole kit so far for this operation that are different. See that? That little screw is much shorter than the ones that, the, the other ones, it's also fatter. So, um, there, there it is separated. And I have a, some heat sinks on this motor. They go towards the outside, obviously, because they won't bolt up to this side because I've put things in the way of them. Also, um, you may or may not want to keep this, definitely, definitely keep your, uh, your gear here. That gear is important because they're really kind of hard to come by. So make sure you don't lose this gear. Um, your next motor may or may not have one. Even if it does not have one, don't lose it. Uh, even if it does have one, don't lose it. You'll want this later on, I promise. I have an extra one, so I'm just going to send this whole thing to my dad. And the opposite is just the opposite. When you put it back together, make sure the screw holes line up. And kind of put these in loosely, these first two screws. Because when you put this back on, your, this motor can be adjusted zoom back in on that so you can see and there is some adjustment here to set the gap you don't want that too tight you don't want it to be way too loose and you do that by uh, notice that the plate here is slotted it's not a perfect circle where those go through and you'll want to kind of have them in loose so that when you put your screws back in you can set that gear mesh so it's not too tight or too less too loose it'll sound wrong if it's too tight and uh, just won't work and your motor will get hot very quickly but um, once you get that right to where you want it um, so I'll just set it for you I'll show you how to do it first thing I do well I'm just going to talk you through it I'll put the screws in loosely put the gear on and have them tight enough so you can slide this motor back and forth a little bit, okay? You want it to be able to slide because that's how you set the teeth. Once it's where you like it, pull this back off, tighten these down, put this back on, recheck the mesh, make sure it's good, then put the whole thing back together. And you can do it exactly the opposite. Uh, when you put a drive shaft back together, make sure it's phased properly. Just a quick video on how to phase a drive shaft properly. If you don't get it right, it's not a big deal, but it is good if you can. Notice how this end here of the drive shaft matches this end here. They're in line with each other. You would not want to put it back together like this. So you've got this end lining up with this end is not centered. So you see how you got this pivot pin here? If it's like this, it's 90 degrees out. You want the insides of the pivot pins to match each other. This one points at this one. Okay, these are the inside edges. If you do that, the outside edge one will match as well. And your drive shaft will run a lot smoother. But that's a quick how to do a motor swap. I know a lot of it's pretty basic for a lot of people, but if you're brand new, and you're afraid to do it. Don't be, it's not a big deal. Um, hope this helps you get back up and running.